Welcome to the Chomp Man Games Without Code tutorial series. In this Games Without Code with Bolt video, we'll not only show you how to set up the enemy character, but we'll also create a dynamic floating effect and create a state machine that allows us to dynamically change colors all based on a single material. We have made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free, so all the characters, levels, textures, sound, and menus are completely free to download and use in this or any other project. If you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chopman project files, links in the description below. To begin, we're going to bring in our ghost characters. Since for this character we won't be using the animator either, we can remove the animator component and let's also tag this character. So let's go to our tags and for our ghost character, we want to tag that enemies, which is not a default within Unity. So we're going to click add tags. And once we click add tags, we can see that it's brought us to our tags and layer window in the inspector. So to add a tag, we can go under our tags and we can click the plus button. And then we can type in our tag. So we're going to tag this one enemy and hit save. So once we have a tag, we can select our characters and we can see it untagged so we can go under our tags and now we can see that we have our enemy tag that we can select for our characters so we're going to select that as enemy so if we go under our materials we can see that we have the elements of our ghost material so one of the things that we're going to be doing to change the color of our ghost is instead of changing the albedo if we click in our emissions if we go into our our textures folder we can see that we have several emissive colors. We can see that we have our blue, which is for when our, when our ghosts are scared, our light blue, orange, pink, and red. And if we drag one of these into our emissions, let's drag the orange into our emissions, we can see that we now have that orange ghost. But before we create that, let's first create our blend shape that we're gonna be using for this ghost. To create the wind flowing effect, if we go to our mesh renders, we can see that we have a blend shape for this ghost. So if we look at our blend shapes, we move our blend shapes, we can see that it moves our sheet up and down, which is going to create that dynamic kind of flowing movement within our sheets. The first thing we're going to do is let's create that dynamic flowing effect with our blend shapes. And since this is going to be using many of the same things that we did with our chomp character, what we can do is use the state machine from our chomp character for our ghost characters as well. So first, let's create the state machine on our ghost characters. Let's create a new macro for our ghost. And we're going to create that. We're going to save that into the folder that we created in our last lesson, our macros folder. And we're just going to call this ghost macro. So we're going to grab our chomp prefabs and bring that into our scene. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to grab the state machine from our chomp character since this is using many of the same states that we're going to need for our ghost character as well. So what we're going to do with our chomp character selected is we're going to go into our blink super state. We're going to grab all these and we're just going to hit control C to copy these over. And within our ghost state, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our start and we're going to right click and we're going to create a super state and we're going to double click and go within our super state. And we're going to select our start state and we're just going to paste the states from the chomp character. So once we have that pasted, we can delete our chomp prefab since we're really not going to use that. And let's go back into our super state. And so let's start by going into our start state. So if we look on our ghost character, we can see that unlike our chomp character, we have our skin mesh render on the mesh itself. So the first thing we can do is we can remove the get child node. So additionally, one of the things that we need to do is we need to change our scene variables because we don't want them to affect any of our other characters. And we're going to change these into object variables. So we're going to create a variable called ghost and we're going to create another variable called ghost mesh renderer. So within our set variables, we're going to change that from scene and we're going to change that to object and we're going to change that to ghost. And we're going to do the same with our other set variable. And we're going to change that to Ghost Mesh Render. So we're going to select our blinking and we're going to rename this to Sheet Up. And we're going to rename our other one to Sheet Down. Next, let's go into our Sheet Up state. And within the state, we don't really need to do much besides change our variables that we have in here. So we're going to go to our variables 
and let's create two float variables for the blink speed and the blink weight. So we're gonna call the first sheet weight and we're gonna call the other one sheet speed. So we're gonna change our blink speed. We're gonna set that into a object variable and we're gonna change that to our sheet speed. Setting this again to our object sheet weight and we're gonna change this to our ghost mesh renderer and we're gonna change this into our sheet weight. We also want to use our ghost for the object variable. And now let's go into our first transition and let's change this to our object variable and we're gonna change this back into our sheet weight and we're gonna use our ghost variable and let's create our min sheet weight Set, to, set that to a float and that's gonna be zero. So let's change that to our object. And for this one, we don't need a pause. So we're gonna remove our pause in our weight, which means this doesn't need to be a coroutine. Really won't matter if it is or if it isn't, but let's re just remove that coroutine from that one. And let's go back and go to our sheet down state. And again, we're gonna set this as an object. We're going to make sure that it is using our sheet weight. We're gonna get our ghost variable to our object. We're gonna use our sheet speed. Our object, we're gonna set that as our ghost mesh renderer. And we're also going to do that for our setting that as our sheet weight. Go to our last transition object, and that is gonna be our sheet weight. And let's create our, our max sheet weight. And we're gonna set that to a float, and that max is 100, since that is the maximum amount for our blend shape. Set that to object, set our max sheet weight, grab our ghost variable, Make sure that it's using our ghost variable to pull our object variables from. And now that we have all that set, let's go and play and test that out. But before we do, let's change our sheet speed. So we're gonna set our sheet speed to be fairly low. So let's try out about 50. So before we hit play, we're gonna just go through all this logic. So we can see once it starts, it's going to grab itself and set itself as the ghost uh, object variable. Once it does that, it's gonna get the skin mesh render component and then it's going to set our, and we can change this as well. So let's change this into our ghost mesh renderer. So it's gonna get our, set that as our ghost mesh renderer variable. Once it gets that, it's gonna use our delta time and it's going to multiply that by our sheet speed time, which we set and then it's going to add that into itself and it is going to adjust our blend shape value with the sheet weight value and the sheet down is going to do that same thing but it's going to subtract that value so from instead of going from 0 to 100 it's going to go from 100 back to 0 and our transitions will fire once the sheet weight meets the max sheet weight and when, once it is greater than that, it will go and set that as true and it will fire our transition. And the same with our other transition, it is just set to do our min sheet weight. So once that equals zero or is less than zero, it will set that to true and it will go back to our sheet up state. So let's hit play. So in play, we can see our values of our sheet weight as well as the floating effect that it's using that our blend shape is somewhat simulating. So we can set that to about 30. And once the character is moving, has this, this floating effect as if the sheet is moving as well. We can test out different speeds. 30 seems to be a good speed. But again, during gameplay, we can always adjust these numbers. So now that we have our sheet blend shape done, we can move on to setting the character's material. So first let's go into our start state and we want to create 
another variable and we want this variable to be for our ghost material and just like our game object and many other variables within bolt it is not hard coded so if we go and we set this to be a uh, material type variable and hit play we can see that it quickly switches to null and even if we go back in play mode it is uh, null as well so we want to start this by going into our unit and going under the ghost mesh and we're going to skin render and we're going to go to get material so once we have our get material we're going to go and we're going to add a set material next we need a set material texture value so for the name if we were to simply use the name albito or either emission uh, that's actually not the true name that is defined within the shader so we're going to have to go to our debug menu and once we go to our debug menu if we go under save properties and we click texture and then we go under emission maps we can see our the name of the actual emission map variable that we need to set so that's underscore capital e in the emission and capital m in map so we can just copy and paste that or just type that so we're going to just paste that into our names and as far as our value what we want to use is our our ghost texture we're going to move that into our values so now let's put everything together so essentially what it's doing now is once it's getting in a, it's setting our character variable it's going to go and grab our material from our character variable and it's going to set it then as the orange material and from there it's going to set that orange materials texture to our orange ghost texture and from there it is going to grab our set material and it's going to set that as the ghost material so i'm going to click play and we can see we now have orange ghost and if we go into our materials we can see that we now have a material instance of our ghost so with that in mind what we're going to do is we're going to change this into the ghost white material so we're going to have an original ghost so before we continue let's first add the components that we're going to need for our enemy character so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a nav mesh agent so our nav mesh agent is going to help our character navigate the scene so the only thing that we need to do with our nav mesh agent is change our base offset our radius and our height so once we have our nav mesh agent added, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add a rigid body component. So the only thing that we need to change with our rigid body is to check the is kinematic checkbox. Next, we want to add a capsule collider. And since we have the nav mesh agent as well as the rigid body for a collision for a capsule collider, we're just going to be using that to detect triggers. So we're going to put on this one is triggers. And once we've done that, we need to make sure that our capsule collider encompasses our enemy. So with our nav mesh rigid body and our capsule collider created, we can move on to creating the other alternative colors for the ghost characters. We're going to duplicate our ghost four times, one for each color. Now, once we have that done, we need to go and we need to duplicate our macros as well. Since if we make a change on one, it will save across all our macros. So we need to make a macro for each of the colors of our ghosts. So we're going to duplicate this and just rename those. So once we have our macros renamed, let's put the macro on each ghost of the same name. So we're gonna put the orange on the orange and so forth. Once that's done, the only thing that we have to do is go into our states and create a material for each of these guys and drag the correct emission within that material. And if we go look at each of these, we can see that we have our unique material in each of these, as well as in our original. And let's hit play to test that out. So we can now see that we have uh, each of our ghosts 
each of the correct colors. Um, we only still have that one material that we're using, our one ghost material. And additionally, we can also change up the speed of each of their sheets as well. So different things like that, just to add different variety to these characters. But essentially our goal of creating the character splint shapes as well as adding the color to the material is complete. And the last thing that we need to do is just drag these into our prefab folder, into our character prefab folder and create a prefab of each of these. So before we do that, let's go and just reset this transform and create a prefab variant. So that completes our enemy setup. In our next lesson, we'll begin creating our gameplay by creating the movement controls for our Chomp character, as well as the dot pellets he'll consume throughout the level. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.